In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a nice shadow blur effect here, which is basically a nice shadow effect that is drawn directly into the canvas matching our line here. So let's start to explore how we can do this immediately. In this video, we're going to explore one of the viewers question, which is how to add shadows to a line chart in chart.js. So this came from one of my other videos. If you can look at here where you can watch this video, which is the chart.js tutorial for beginners. And in this video, if you scroll down, I had this question here from Chris Francia. So a special thank you for, to Chris for asking this question. And this is the following what he says. Is there a way to add shadows to a chart? And I assume you probably line chart because you can create a nice effect on it. And then here what he says more is I found this chart.js plugin style js but it doesn't seem to work on my end so the reason why this doesn't work by the way is because chart.js 3 has some breaking changes this plugin was created for chart.js 2 and since then hasn't been updated for a while so this means that you cannot use this plugin for your current chart here chart here so what we're going to do is we're going to create currently the best possible solution and I will be eventually diving deeper into this because this is more into the canvas of JavaScript. However, let's start and explore how we can do this. To start off, let's get the inchartjs3.com, the getting starting started uh, section. You can see here there's the link and in here there's a chunk of code and I want you to copy the entire code here. It basically explains here and if you want to know what this code does watch this video where it explains the JavaScript which is down here that is separated in different blocks so I'm going to paste this in here and once I did that I'm going to just copy this title here switch it in here all right so once we did this save this refresh and now as you can see we have a nice chart here but this is a bar chart we want to convert this into a line chart so to do this what we're going to do in here is we're going to do some tiny adjustments. We're going to remove all of these excess codes here. So we want one single line. And this line eventually will have a shadow effect on it. So we save this here now. Save, oh, sorry, of course, comma, comma here. I'm going to remove this or just say here tension 0 0.4, which is form, which makes the line more elastic and give it a line bar for line chart instead of a bar chart refresh and now we have a line chart here all right so this looks beautiful but now what i want to do is i want to give it a shadow effect here a shadow effect basically implies here that at the very back of it it looks like there is a almost a 3d effect so let's start and explore so to do this what we're going to do is we basically going to create a temporary or a new chart which we call a controller so what we're going to do in here is the following. We're going to put in here a new chart. And if you want to understand this a little bit more, in chart.js, scroll down here in the developers, you can select here a new chart, and you can see this part here. Basically, we're doing this, but we're doing some adjustments because this here will not work immediately because there are, I'm not sure if there's some mistakes or the structure is slightly different than our structure because it uses here the import. We are not going to use imports. We're going to use the class. And here, you may see this here, it has like a parentheses additional, and I cannot figure out where this parentheses came from. Maybe from the import, I'm not sure, but for some reason, this don't work for me. So I create my own version here. So to do this, we're going to adjust this here by creating our own version of the custom chart. So it's basically a custom chart from a controller. So in here, we first say class, creating this class which will indicate as custom and this will extend we say extend with an s the chart dot line controller which is basically saying that here you can see here we have all of these these are the built-in chart types so we are just borrowing everything except we're going to do some tiny adjustments in here so we're going to borrow the line controller, which is basically just a line chart. But now what we want to do is we're going to create this shadow effect. So the shadow effect is basically a tiny adjustment on the chart itself. 
So that's what we're going to do here. So parentheses here. And in here we say draw. So we're going to draw this. And then here again parentheses. And now what we need to do is the following. We're going to say here call the line controller method to draw the points. All right. So in here, this should be slash slash. Of course, it's a comment. So in here, we're going to use the term super dot draw. This term I did not make up. It is basically as well from here. You can see here as well. We have the super draw draw. And here we have, of course, as well the arguments in here. And this is just exactly the same. We're calling all points here. So we're going to grab these arguments, use this term as well, put it in there, semicolon. So once we have this, what we need to do now is start to do our custom custom drawing, which is directly a canvas command. So we say here, first of all, constant ctx equals and ctx is that way for the context but this is also directly the canvas itself so we want to draw in this canvas what this is exactly is ctx equals this chart dot ctx so in here we're going to start working on it but of course if we do this we did not activate this part yet and we did not even adjust the line type because when we use here the line controller we're having a new type of chart basically. So it's a different type. We need to rename it with whatever we want it here. So that's what we will be doing as well once we're done here. So once we have this here, we have this part, and then we can say here the following let underscore stroke equals ctx dot stroke, which means that we're going to draw here the stroke, but we're going to give it a let. And the reason why is that once you are in the chart and start to draw the chart, it will create an effect. But it loops through this consistently. So we need to call it a let and not a constant because it will go probably like 50 times because it's like multiple seconds with some frames and effects on it because of the animation. So that's why we need this one here. So once we have that here, we're going to say ctx.stroke equals a function. And this function will start to draw all the objects that we want. So based here, we're going to say you first of all cdx.save to save and store these details here. And then what we want to do here is the first one is the ctx.shadow. Or a shadow color. So we want to give the shadow color or we want to give the shadow a proper color. In this case, we'll just assign it as a black color. Once we have that, then we can start to put in the blur effect, etc., etc. So what I want to do, and as I realize, is I think it's probably the best because if I do this right now, we're not being—it's not yet activated. We don't see anything yet. Even if I would say here, console.log, and so probably would be good to in uh, to register this small plugin first before we do anything else. So if I say here, let's grab this, save that, and refresh. You can see nothing happens. The reason why nothing happens is we didn't register yet. So what I'm going to do is just for, for now, so we can have a nice demo of this to register this properly. So what we're going to do here, we say here custom dot ID, which will give us the name that we want. And if you wonder why custom, as you can see here, this is the class. We're going to refer to the class and give it an ID name. And the ID name is basically the chart type or basically the type name. So we can say here anything. So let's say here, uh, shadow line. And this shadow line will eventually be set here as well as the type. So this will be matching. Then what we need to do is, we need to say here as well, custom.defaults. And the default equals, what are we going to do here? Basically, this part here, we want to grab this chart line controller defaults. The reason why we're doing this is basically to get all the properties that the line controller has. So we want to make sure we, we borrow this one. This is the why we have this here, but here we're going to initiate it as well. So once we have this, we want to activate this or register this part. And how do we register this? We say a chart 
dot register the class name which is custom all right so if i save this now and refresh all right shadow line is not yet defined all right fair enough so let's double check here this is an id which of course should not be an id sorry it should be a string make sure that this is a string save that refresh all right as you can see it does something but of course right now we didn't do a lot of things here what i want to do here is probably just to uh remove or not really remove this i want to show you these but i'm going to comment out this because this is giving you us currently the error so i'm going to say here show me or log the console log of this ctx that stroke and you'll see that this will be multiple times here if i refresh here as you can see here this so what happens if we're going to make this here exactly the same you can see here it moves and it does a lot of things like all these animations but if i change it to a constant we might get an error well for some reason it is fine here all right which is all right because once we are in the function it might trigger the error so what we're going to do here let's continue on here before we we do anything else so in here you have all of these commands so that is really nice with canvas you can still do multiple commands here basically you can grab everything from what the canvas does and you have full control on that so we can say here shadow blur to give it a blur effect we give this a value of 10 pixels and here we can say how do we want the line to move do we want the line to move on the uh, x-axis or on the y-axis so basically we want to make a shadow do we want to move it to the left or the right or up and down we can do this with the ctx shadow and then here offset and then let's say x equals zero so if we put it on zero it will not move it will keep the shadow on the same position horizontally but vertically we can push it a little bit down let's say four pixels so we can do this all just copy that adjust it with the y value and then we say here four pixels and once we did this and then you will see here what, what we need to do and this was the core issue here we need to grab this let's make this on let and in the let here we say underscore stroke which grabs this one here and then we say here dot apply because what we are going to do is we're going to apply this to an array and what array are we going to apply it to well basically every item here on all of these dots on every these every line that is connected all of these should have the same item so basically we are looping through this multiple times let me say here, this comma arguments that we grab here put it in here as well semicolon and finally once we have this ctx that we store this all right so if i save this right now we should have now a nice blur effect all right there we are and you can see here it loops through again multiple times so what happens now if i change this to a constant so that works apparently fine as well and i thought this would be an issue so in this case you can make this a constant as well so i thought this would become an issue because of the loop here of the effect but apparently it has no issue here and you can see here it grabs everything here it shows all the values and this is the only downside as of now it creates here this nice blur effect or shadow effect but sadly enough it also triggers it on here this is the only part here which currently i am not able to solve but very soon i'll be making a separate video covering this but this is probably for now the best solution to create it thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course make sure you subscribe to my channel